All right, Jackie. You came to the right place. What do you need? What do you know of the victim? I know that he was not the good and honest man he liked to think he was. This lady seems to have like the least compelling motive. At least from what we can see so far. Yeah. In what sense? If you spoke to him for longer than five minutes, you'd know. I've met people in dark alleys I trust before him. And on the occasions when you did speak with him, what was discussed? I'm sorry, Poirot. If you're looking for a deep-seated secret between me and him, you're going to be disappointed. Mademoiselle Conrad is wise to the nature of this question. She knows exactly what and what not to say. This nut may be harder to crack than first expected. As you were previously speaking with him, I assume you and you know Monsieur Becker's as well, then. That man has got some real anger issues. <laughs> I get why he's frustrated. He's trying his best for the workers, but holding on a rage like that, something's gonna burst. That's true. A man suppressing his anger and a murdered body. The most amateur detective could see a connection. You seem to know a great deal about everyone. What can you tell me about Monsieur de Silver and Madame Vandenbosch? If you think you can use me as some sort of gossip machine... You are sorely mistaken. I can assure you it is not a case of gossiping. At this point, everything may be relevant to my investigation. So I would be helping you potentially solve a crime? You should have said that off the bat. To say he's smitten is an understatement. I reckon he's been wanting her for years. I see. Madame does not feel the same. Doesn't look like it. If she did, she would have said something about it, right? What are your thoughts on the Comtesse? I'd appreciate your opinion on her. I don't know if you really would. She's got a mouth the size of Texas, except when it comes to <laughs> truths about her. She wants everyone to think that she's the savior of these girls at the shelter. But there's a side to her I don't think anyone gets to see. And what side is that? One that she is keeping tucked away under her very expensive dress. I can only see that the work at a women's shelter is positive. Even if the reason to start came from a selfish place, the work they do cannot be scoffed at. That is the thing with rich people. It's like they know that immortality is yeah. by getting your name on something, but at least some good comes out of it. Yeah, it's the you same thing. Go to any helpful. university and you'll see that there are these families. Oh, yeah. Any university. All right, we got two yeah, more links here. Like, even in Indiana... Even in Indiana, the Lily family is everywhere. It's in museums, it's in the, you know, schools, it's everywhere. Or like at a, in a, at Carolina where I went, the Moorhead family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. Let's see where these links are. Major didn't approve of the marriage. Okay, maybe this is something. Zach resents Gideon. It feels as though he's held on to the, his, this resentment for a long time. And Gideon and Zach quarreled. Mm -hmm. Does that have to do with the resentment? Order and method. No. That is the way. Okay. Gideon denies his brother's drinking. Why is he denying it? I must take uh, okay. a different approach if I am... Gideon wrote the letter... Oh, is that a reason why the major didn't approve of the marriage? I yeah. cannot see the logic in this. Oh, no. Well. Uh. Oh, over here. Okay. These four hints. Hugo claims to have calmed down, but he's but Jackie says that he's frustrated, and Ernesto and Cassandra have a good friend or have a friendship. Okay. Yeah. Hugo claims to have calmed down, but I wonder if the threat could have escalated. That's probably connected to his frustration. According to Jackie, Hugo is still mad at the Major in our absence. I should not be surprised by my own... Hugo claims to have calmed down since his argument with the Major, but Jackie disputed this. Alright. I don't think Hugo is the killer, though. Just because it was a single stab wound. If it was bottled up and passionate, it would be multiple. Jackie seems fairly sure that Ernesto's feelings are one of friendship. I don't think so. I don't. That's not what I got from the conversation, but okay. Yeah. Margot confirmed that Ernesto has always had feelings for Cassandra. The pieces of the puzzle are fine. Perhaps Ernesto had hidden his secret love well. We can use this to our advantage. All right, let's talk to Ernesto. Oh, and we also want to talk to Margot again. Anybody and else? And Zach into. and... Yeah, and Zach as well. Ernesto, Margot, okay. and Zach. 
Let's do it. Okay. Okay, Margo. I am all yours, detective. We're gonna push on the major's aggression towards Cassandra. Countess, Ooh, you gave me the go, impression guys. the major and the madame were close. Let's do it, let's do it. Uh, right, but there right, were right, times vampire. where he acted rather aggressively to her, n'est-ce pas? We gotta be strategic. Come on, weird vampire, we got this. I am sorry, detective, yeah. but I did not mean to give you such an impression. I have already built a rapport with the Countess. Some may even say in a flirtatious manner. Perhaps if I continue to charm her, she will reveal the information I require. Flattering. It is obviously... Oh no, weird vampire, oh. <laughs> it is obviously I who am mistaken. A fine woman of your stature would not purposely lead a young man astray, or humble. If I have been mistaken, would you be so kind as to correct me in my train of thought? Uh... So because he said flirtatious, I want yeah, I, I kind of want to say flattering. But at the same time, the humble one seems that it would give us an answer. I don't know. I feel like correct, but at the same asking, time, asking for someone to correct. Yeah, weird vampire. I think asking asking her to correct. Yes. Ever the charm detective. I would talk more on it, but I'm afraid Cassandra would think I am talking about her behind her back. The Comtesse has something more to say, but she still holds back. Something tells me it is more to do with receiving attention. So she wants attention. Perhaps I can use that to my advantage. Yeah. Cautionary. How would Madame Van den Bosch... I know, weird vampire. <laughs> How would Madame oh, Van den Bosch God. feel if she heard the contents of our conversation from me? Oh, no, we don't want to do that one. Of course, if you obviously no, care a great no. deal about Madame Van den Bosch, assisting me will help clear her of any wrongdoing. That is what you want for her, isn't it? Oh, definitely coercive. Definitely coercive. Oh, yeah. That goes along with everything that she has said with us, to us. It yes. is not often I am swayed so easily. I applaud you on your willingness and persistence. There we go. Go team! Look at us. Anyone, I was wary of yes, his Yes, here we go! And it was not long before he showed his true colors. If it is a tear she sheds, it should be one of joy that he is out of her life. I understand your feelings towards the Major, but perhaps there was... He was a bully. He took his shortcomings out on her, and she sat there and accepted it. I never thought I would see the day. Perhaps now she will be able to see the man he truly was. Karma will always catch up to you. All right. Merci, Countess. If I have any further... Now, Ernesto. More questions. Good job. Good job to you. Good job. Go team. High Three-way high five between all yeah. of us. High all five, right. yeah. <laughs> Apologies for the insistent questions on the subject, but you and Madame Van den Bosch... Mademoiselle Conrad was quick to talk of your hidden feelings towards her. Perhaps only hidden to Madame Van den Bosch herself. What has this got to do with the Major's death? Does Cassandra know you have spoken to others about this? I have only tried to help her. I'm merely asking... Oh, I can't exit out of this one. Maybe I can only... Oh, oh I think I can only pick one. Yeah. I'm merely asking the question. There's no reason to panic. It would greatly help me if you'd answer honestly. Or, I'm not accusing you of anything, but if you continue to avoid the question, I may think that there is in fact something you are hiding. I think number I two. I think this is one of those, uh, yeah, I was, I was going to say, I think this is one of those questions where it doesn't matter. Very much like when uh, Florette was oh, being yeah. accused and we had those different options. I don't think it matters. It's all going to lead to the same place. But yeah, I think number two. There may be some feelings there. But Madame Van den Bosch does not know of them. And I trust that it will remain that way. Oh, Ernesto. Go for Merci it, man. Merci for your cooperation. Life is too short. She's a widow. Uh, you know, it was so funny. I talked about, I well, I, I think I told Amanda this. Um, I was watching Patton Oswald do a, pre, do a little mm -hmm. sketch routine. Um, and his wife passed away rather suddenly. His first wife passed away rather suddenly a few years ago. And he was saying, um, 
after that happened, he decided he was like, no, I'm just gonna not focus on my own happiness ever again. I'm just gonna focus on our daughter and making sure she's happy and her life is great. And then he said, and then this poem of a woman came into my life and relit the sky. <laughs> and, he, and he said, if you ever have an opportunity at love, run for it. <laughs> I'm like, oh! That's so yeah. That is so sweet. All men oh. suck. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Hugo. Whatever you require, detective. Oh, I guess don't talk to Hugo. Merci. Oh, it was Zach. It was Zach. Was That's it right. Zach? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm an open book father. Your relationship with your brother. It seems everyone has an opinion. That doesn't surprise me, and yet, no one actually asks. I am asking now. I should have expected that, shouldn't I? What is there to say? We used to be close, but not so much anymore. Well, they used I would to find close. it very helpful if you could at least elaborate on your relationship. He went to school, got an education, and was the apple of our father's eye. I went to war. See the difference now. Oh. Uh. Monsieur has again mentioned his time in the war. While I do not mean to bel belittle his efforts for his country, it seems as though he has not been able to leave that life behind on the battlefield. No, very few people can. Yeah. Was there anything between hard. England and Turkey? Let me look that up because I did. We did uh, see in the last episode that yeah, because initially we the thought last name is French. Yeah, which is which is totally fine. Like that's to be expected in anywhere in, across Europe and Asia. Like last names are gonna change up and be spread. Yeah, because it's a Mediterranean country, so it makes sense for them to like intermarry or like anything. Yeah, like, like okay, hold on, let me take a look. Same ancestry, middle. Okay, yeah. Um, Middle Eastern theater of World War One. So yeah, World War One. Britain and Turkey fought on several fronts, and also the Turkish War of Independence was from 1919 to 23. Ah, okay. But that would have been against the Ottoman Empire. But yeah, it would have been World War One, I, I think. Okay. What do you know of your brother's timeline? work with the Union? If you want to know about Gideon's part in the Union, why don't you ask him? So you are aware of his support for them. Yes, well, he... Oui, monsieur? It'd be best to just ask him. Mm. Monsieur either does not know much of what his brother does, or he is protecting him rather coyly. I think that is all for now. Merci for your time. So they're not close. There's some tension there, but obviously, but they're brothers. Of course, they still love each uh, other. Yeah, I think I don't think it's necessarily because of they did anything to each other. I think it just it's because like uh, Gideon maybe followed more in what their father was expecting, mm -hmm. and thus their father um, favored him more. Okay, so that probably just caused tension there. So let's make a connection. There's one connection here, and then we need to talk to Gideon. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything new from okay. The major is abusive, confirmed. Mm -hmm. Towards Cassandra. Ernesto cares for Cassandra. Could that be tied? Maybe. Come uh, no. Grace has. We Something. Ernesto is fond of Cassandra, and Ernesto cares for Cassandra? I must act well, on thought. Maybe. Oh, I mean, they're kind of the Major's involved in the workers' strikes, working as security. Hugo has dirt on the Major? Obviously, some information on the Major. Is there something I... Hmm. Okay. Okay, there were issues between the Major and Cassandra. She's sitting at issues regarding... Oh! Maybe it's these two. This will oh. not get me any closer to my goal. Ah. Uh. Wait, oh, oh, it's not over there at all. It's over here. It's Zach is defensive of Gideon. Although they aren't close, Zach is willing to withhold details about his brother's dealings. Why does this surprise me? It's because Zach What a is revelation. He claims not to be close to his brother, but still seeks to withhold information about him. Zach is, Zach has a conflicting attitude towards his brother. Okay, now let's talk to Gideon. Yeah. So it's not about Gideon at all. 
I think. It's probably just about the Yeah, it's about the brother and the No trouble at all. How can I help? I'd like to talk more about your brother. I believe there are more important matters at hand than talking about my brother and I's relationship or lack thereof. The murderer is in this house, and by holding back information that may help my investigation, you only make me suspicious of your involvement. Monsieur Demir, if you continue to withhold information, I can only assume you are hiding something and must treat you as a prime suspect in the Major's murder. I have nothing to hide. If you must know, we have not been on the best terms for years now. As I said, we are different people. He does not see the importance of planning for the future. And as much as my parents tried, they could not make him see that. I suppose that is why he sees me as their favorite. He probably just was tra- had some trauma and just was like, let me just live right now. Yeah, you know? and you, that, that has to go somewhere, you know, and it goes to the bottle and it goes to resentment, I think. It goes to the bottle, it goes to spending money. Yeah. He still believes that yeah. now. I assume so. We barely talk anymore. I was hoping we would be able to sit down and talk and leave the past behind. But this evening has not panned out that way. Okay. If you would be so kind as to... Okay. Does that create any more connections? All right. Yes. One more connection. I'm hoping we can ho- hopefully move on from this then. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gideon feels detached from Zach. Clearly they haven't been close for some time. Is this feeling mutual? Oh, but he has a conflicting attitude. I cannot see or... the logic in this. Okay. Uh, it could be the reason. He resents Zach. Things yes. Are beginning to be... Ernesto denies Cassandra is more than a friend. Oh. What a revelation. What? The brothers are suspicious individually, but I cannot see them working together. I have my own opinion of the major, one that is wiser kept to myself, but I did not expect so many like-minded thinkers. I should think further on what I have to heard in my quarters. Okay, the brothers unlikely did not, or were unlikely to cooperate together. Okay. Talk to Archie. Wait, is this anything? Nope. Okay, talk to Archie. And then we're probably going to go back to our room and talk to our little gray selves. Oh, can we, what does the piano do? My I time with the guests the is does. complete. For tonight, at least. Do oh, you no, know who I... killed Major Hagen? I am afraid it is not as simple as that. There are many steps that lead to the truth. I must think on everything I have heard this evening and dissect the truths from the lies. Merci for your assistance this evening. Au revoir. I came here expecting to solve a case of blackmail, to relieve a family of a burden that has weighed upon them and overshadowed a joyous celebration. All right, let's see what this next part is. We have about 15-ish minutes left. All right, yeah. I have, so we have some, pl- some time to think about this a little bit more. I've never been to an engagement celebration where a death has taken center stage before. Although the guests' alibis confirm each other's, I still can't rule out the possibility of one of them being involved in the Major's death. The relationships between some of the guests and the Major were more than rocky. Dislike toward him was plentiful, but enough to drive someone to murder? This is now the perfect opportunity to think about everything I have heard today. I really like that this, oh, sorry, I know you are going to talk. I really like that they're taking us through this step by step. Like first establish the crime scene, then establish the room, then go to, you know, everyone's whereabouts, and then we go into the motives. I really like that they had separate stages for that. Okay, it looks like we're here to figure out who we think the culprit is. All right, let's start up here on the top left. Hugo. Hugo. Or at least who had the, the motive and opportunity. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hugo lied about his temper. He claims to have calmed down since his argument with the Major, but Jackie disputed this. Hugo was also invited by Gideon. They have worked together, and it was Gideon that invited him here. Hugo also has dirt on the Major. Jackie. Jackie wants information from Hugo. (gasps) Could that be the dirt on the Major? Yes! Oh my gosh! Ah! I never doubted myself. When She's I first overheard their conversation, it seems Hugo was trying to get Jackie to listen. Jackie's pushing for dirt on the Major. 
Okay, what else about Jackie? Jackie knows a lot about the other guests. It's her job to know and report the news. It's not surprising she knows the guests at such an event. She also claims Margot is hiding something. Jackie's opinion of Margot is not that much better than that of the majors. What is it that Margot is hiding? Margot. Margot and Cassandra are longtime friends. They are a pair I would not want to go head to head, head, to head with in an argument with. Margot claims the letter was merely advice for the major, but it sounded more like a threat. Is that what she's hiding that Jackie knows about? I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. The letter she sent, protecting Cassandra, was threatening indeed, and Jackie seems unable to determine her secret. So what is Margot's motive? Protection? The salon. Gideon, Zach, Mar and Margot's alibis all confirm each other's. They were all in the salon at least for some time together. Surely someone else is to blame. While Hugo, Ernesto, and Jackie support each other's each other's versions of events. So someone else must be responsible, surely. Hmm. Hmm. Gideon. Gideon is hesitant to mention his past with the Major. There is still something regarding the Major that he is withholding. Does he have something to hide? He wrote the letter. Could that be tied major. to... What? Could that be tied to what it was? What, what was with Hugo? Because Hugo was there something with Hugo about working with Gideon? Um, this no. will not get me any. Cl okay, never mind. Gideon wrote the letter. Is that tied to? I must Hugo? act on no. thought. <laughs> Gideon is trying to start negotiations. Trying to improve the worker standards seems like an honest motive for his negotiations. Is that connected to Hugo? Is no. there something I... Oh, wait. The ah. pieces of the puzzle are finally coming. Gideon's history with the Major, combined with his threats to his well-being, definitely show intent. Gideon's motive, retribution. Some oh. would say a lucky guest. All the guests have at least one other guest to confirm their alibis. All right, get in, Zach. Zach's conflicting attitude. He claims to not be close to his brother, but still seeks to withhold information about him. <clears throat> Zach expressed his disdain for Margot. He had no interest in speaking with Margot or his brother. He is repressing something. I believe he is compensating for something with his consumption of alcohol. And Zach resents Gideon. It feels as though he has held on to his resentment for a long time. Could that be tied to his repression? Come, my little gray cells. No. Okay, let's move on to Ernesto. Threat to the Major. He has tried to intimidate the Major in his letter. Ernesto cares for Cassandra. He cares deeply for Cassandra. Perhaps his anger has peaked. Oh, maybe that's connected to his threat to the Major. Yes. Blinded by both love and greed, he may have struck down his opposition. All right, those are all of his our links so far. Reach a conclusion based on what you've learned. But we don't have any more links. Yeah, okay. Someone banged on the door. Who could that be at this time? Entrez. Detective, I'm sorry I did not join you in the salon as requested. Please, mademoiselle. There is no need to apologize. I was with maman in her room. She would not allow anyone to see it, but I could see she was terribly upset. Most understandable. Do you have any suspicions as to who could have killed him? I'm afraid my suspicions extended across all of the party's guests. While it seems as though their alibis all corroborate one another's, the disdain and hostility towards the Major makes them rife with motive. I know there was some bad blood between the Major and some of the guests, but not enough to kill him, surely. She may seem tough on the exterior, but she's really quite kind. When you get to know her. Who's her? Mom? The Countess. Oh. She is a formidable force I would not want to come up against. Oh, Margot. Don't be silly, detective. She wouldn't hurt a soul. Oh, Jackie! Jacqueline, I mean. 
Mademoiselle Conrad, she was in fact the least suspicious until now. I assume yeah. that's who you were talking about, detective, after what happened between them. Oh! That is a story I have yet to hear. She must have told you about the piece she was writing on us, about Gideon's work and our marriage. Somehow that was the only thing she did not mention. That's strange. I thought that is what she would have started the conversation with. Well, she had come to the house to interview me, and when I entered the library, she was there with Felix amid a rather heated conversation. I know, I didn't see this coming either. Oh. Do you know what this conversation regarded? Oh, so maybe the Major didn't want Jackie writing something about the family. I'm afraid not, but Felix was quite enraged. Yeah. He picked up an envelope from the table and stormed out, slamming the door behind him. And Mademoiselle Conrad? She was equally heated in the moment. She had a few choice words for him that I wouldn't care to repeat. How is Madame feeling now? Or, if you're in my position, Mademoiselle, who would be at the top of your suspect list? That's what I want to ask first, just in case. I'm yeah. sorry, but I just can't imagine any of them committing such a heinous crime. It can often be hard to look past one's personal feelings for someone and see their flaws. It's not that, detective. It's just they have known each other for years. Why would any of them act now? I was under the impression the Major had merely a business relationship with some of the guests. That's true. But those invited know each other, some of them for years. They may not seem like it, but some are even friends. All right, how's Madame feeling now? Better, thank you, detective. She's resting in her room. It is the best place for her. And you, mademoiselle? Huh, I'm not quite sure. It is a rather surreal feeling. I did not think I would miss him like I do. It is understandable. He has been a close friend to your maman for many years. And to me, detective. We had grown close. After father's passing, he was always there for me. And now, he's gone as well. You must try and not think on it like that. It is easier said than done, detective. I have no doubt, but you can be assured. The culprit will not remain at large for long. You have my world. I should return to my room now, detective. It has been a trying day for us all. Oui, mademoiselle. I am afraid tomorrow may bear a resemblance, but I will not stop until I have found his killer. I am certainly glad you are here, detective. That is the funny thing about games like this during this time, or stories like this during this time period, where it's like, someone in the house has killed someone. Let's all go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> As if the killer's not still in the house. Like, you know, someone, <laughs> You're just sitting there. someone's a murderer in here. <laughs> with, a with a knife under the pillow. <laughs> When and where a detective is required, that is where I shall be. <laughs> Bonne nuit, mademoiselle. Mademoiselle has left me with an interesting thought, one I had not considered until now. While at first glance the guests do not appear to show much fondness for each other, mademoiselle is quite sure that is not the case. Perhaps I must consider looking at the guests together, and not individually. Yes! It's yeah, saving. because if, even though they vouch for each, yeah, even though they vouch for each other, one could be just covering for another. Like Jackie could be covering for Hugo. Yeah, and uh, the brothers could still be covering for each other. 